Hello children, let me welcome you to the virtual training center of the Brihan Mumbai Mahanagar Palika. My name is Shraddha teacher. Children, we are in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, isn't it? Because of that, we are not able to go to school. But that doesn't mean that we are going to stop learning. We are going to meet here regularly through the virtual training center to learn many lessons in EVS. So come on, let's go to a lesson in EVS. So children, let us start with the last lesson in our EVS2 textbook for standard 4th. Okay, now the name of this lesson is lesson number 18, Management of the Welfare State of Swaraj. Now in this particular lesson, we are going to talk about what happened after Swaraj was established. Now, since lesson number one onwards, we have been seeing how the background was laid for Swaraj and how Shivaji Maharaj relentlessly, tirelessly, without any, you can say, rest, okay, how he struggled for the establishing, for the establishment of Swaraj in Maharashtra. Okay, now in this particular lesson, we will talk about how the Swaraj was managed. All right. Now, if you remember in lesson number 17, towards the end, we saw how unfortunately Shivaji Maharaj passed away. Okay. A few months after a few, a short period of time after his mother passed away, after Jijau passed away, Shivaji Maharaj also met an untimely death. He died too early. Okay. So, in this lesson, we are not going to learn about what Shivaji actually was doing at that period of time, but we will learn what arrangements he had made for management of welfare state of Swaraj. Okay. But we will also look at what were the various powers that Shivaji Maharaj fought. You know that we have been learning that his father, right from his father's time, there was, there was constant struggle between the Adil Shah, between the Nizam Shah, between the Marathas, okay? And especially Shivaji Maharaj, he had to face the wrath of all these leaders, alright? So, he fought various battles, he fought various powers, not only one power but various powers, okay? In order to establish Swaraj in Maharashtra. Now, let us talk about how he struggled long against many unjust powers. So, certain battles went on for, you can say, it went on and on for years. And sometimes they would lay sieges to forts. You learned the story of how they laid siege to Panhalgad and how they laid, laid siege to various forts. There, they used to wait months for the enemy to surrender. Okay, so Shivaji Maharaj, he struggled long and hard against many unjust powers in Maharashtra. You must have seen how the life of the people was very, very disturbed and they used to be harassed, they used to be troubled and the people used to take a lot of advantage of the poor people, of the people in Maharashtra and certain places, they had become like barren lands. The houses, the people had run away from their houses and there were wild animals roaming all around. Okay, so in this condition, Shivaji took over the reins of Maharashtra in his hand and he struggled long and hard against many unjust powers. And what was his only, you can say wish, his only wish was establishing Swaraj in Maharashtra. And that he did. But there were the Adil Shahi, the Mughal power, the Portuguese, the Siddhis of Janjira. All these people were there to face. Okay. He had to face all these people and some of them were really, really very, very, you can say powerful in front of Shivaji, in front of their army of lakhs of soldiers. Sometimes Shivaji used to have just a hundred in his army. But what did he do? Did he give up? Did he ever give up? No. He continued with his struggle. Okay. So, he fought against the Adil Shahi. He fought against the Mughals. He fought against the Portuguese. So, the Adil Shahi and Mughals were invaders. The Portuguese were foreigners. Okay. The Siddhis also, they had come from Africa. So, all these, uh, you can say tribals, all these people, Shivaji Maharaj faced bravely in order to establish Swaraj in Maharashtra. Okay, and this is how an independent Hindavi Swaraj was created by Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. Okay, he created the Swaraj for the people living in the land. He said we should not let any outsider come and rule us. We should not bow down before any outsider. And that is why he set up his own rule. 
that is swaraj our own rule all right then we will see that he set up eight administrative departments now any government if you see it has got various departments okay we have got the finance minister we have got the uh, defense minister we have got the home minister in the same way for smooth working shivaji maharaj had divided the administration into eight departments eight different 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 departments which were these departments come on let's see now so we had the administrative department for political that is taking political decisions and which uh, which country should be which state or which king should we have friendly relations with and which uh, should we should be support which country we should oppose which country so for all these political decisions there was an administration department then there was a department for revenue and accounts of the state now if any state has to run properly they should have enough money okay they should have enough revenue income and also whatever income comes into the state all this has to be calculated properly whatever money is coming in how much money is spent and where are we spending all this money so all this calculation has to be done only then the state will become a welfare state the state will become a state which is looking after the good of the people so there was this revenue and accounts department the third department was the defense department now this was very important extremely important department because only if your country is independent only if your country is protected from the external forces from the external invasions from other kings only then you can people will be happy okay so there was the defense department and then there was a religious matters department now you all know we have learned also that shivaji maharaj used to respect not only his own religion but all other religions he never used to destroy any places of worship he never used to destroy any kind of religious books okay so he had a department which used to look after all religious matters also then there was the justice department just like we have the courts in today's times okay you have the police force then you have the court in case you feel that someone is doing you some harm or there has been injustice done to you you go to the court in the same way there was a justice department too during the rule of shivaji maharaj he had created this department then there were the government orders department okay and then we had the correspondence department now what is the correspondence department correspondence department means writing letters and replying to letters which is written by other kings other rulers okay so correspondence when someone sends you a letter you have to reply back to it now people like us we hardly get one letter in a day or one letter in a week but imagine a king he must be getting so many letters so there used to be a person who used to take care of what reply to give so there was this correspondence department and finally there was the foreign relations department also foreign relations means how to deal with the outsiders okay whether to have friendly relations with them if they are good then you are friendly with them if they are not good then you have to think about how to deal with them so all this used to be looked after by the foreign relations department so these were the eight administrative departments of shivaji maharaj and why had he done it why had he divided the administration into eight departments so that the work would be very very smooth everyone will be doing their own job and therefore the country will the swaraj will run well will function well okay apart from that he also had appointed a minister in charge of each of the department okay this was his famous council of eight ministers and they were called as the ashta pradhan ashta means eight and pradhan means chief okay so there was the amatya there was the sachiv there was the mantri the senapati sumant pandit rao nyayadish and there was a pant pradhan so these were all the ministers that he had appointed who would take care of the work of swaraj all right now let us look at the people who were the ministers now in today's times if you look you can see that the uh, chief minister of our state of maharashtra at this time who is he he is shri uddhav thakre all right so in this way there were various people who were heading the various departments during shivaji's rule also
सो सी देखो द नेम ऑफ द मिनिस्टर मोरो त्रिम्बक पिंगले ही वॉज द प्रधान प्रधान मीन्स ही वॉज लाइक द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ओके एंड ही लुकड आफ्टर द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन दैट इज द पॉलिटिकल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन we saw the names of the departments now so now we are looking at who used to manage them then we had then there was ramchandra nilkant muzumdar he was the amatya so the amatya is almost like a ca he is like an accountant who used to may do the work of revenue and accounts of the state then there was hambir rao mohite he was the senapati who is a senapati senapati is the chief of the sena sena means the army ओके सो हम्बीर राव मोहिते वॉज इन चार्ज ऑफ डिफेंस देन देर वॉज मोहरेश्वर पंडित राव न पंडित ही वॉज अ पंडित मीन्स ही वॉज अ ब्राह्मण ही यूज टू डू द वर्क ऑफ टू परफॉर्मिंग ऑल द डिफरेंट पूजाज एक्सेट्रा वॉट वॉज इज डेजिग्नेशन वॉट वॉज द पोस्ट दैट वॉज गिवन टू हिम ही वॉज अ पंडित राव एंड ही यूज टू लुक आफ्टर ऑल रिलीजियस मैटर्स देन देर वॉज निराजी रावाजी who was a nyayadish nyayadish means the judge now you must have seen uh, movies in the movies there is a court room and there are uh, lawyers there are vakils okay and there is a judge who sits on a high chair and he gives decisions so who was the justice or who was a nyayadish it was niraji rao ji okay then there was anna ji datto he was the sachiv that is a secretary kind of a person he used to issue all government orders then there was dattaji trimbak wakness he was the mantri in charge of correspondence correspondence means writing letters replying to letters etc and finally there was ramchandra trimbak dabir who was the sumant sumant means he was in charge of foreign relations so see these were the ashtapradhan these are names of the ashtapradhan eight departments with eight responsibilities and eight people who were heading these departments okay so this was about the administration of shivaji maharaj now because of all this planning because of all this work which is done very properly because of all the work which was equally divided among the people okay and people were given responsibilities and they had to do their job properly because of all these arrangements that shivaji maharaj had made you will see that people lived happily in the swaraj created by chhatrapati shivaji maharaj therefore the qualities of confidence self respect and patriotism strongly emerged among the people of maharashtra so the people of maharashtra the marathas okay the people who live in maharashtra the maharashtrians they are supposed to be very you know strong brave fearless people and who created this uh, you can say foundation for these people it was chhatrapati shivaji maharaj he was the person who created this base for them and that is why you will see that all these qualities of confidence self respect patriotism all these have emerged very strongly among the people of maharashtra and shivaji maharaj was in a way responsible for it even today you will see that shivaji maharaj is revered okay he is respected a lot he is almost uh, given the status of god all right he is worshiped in many places all right all this was because of the love that he gave the people now you know that there is there are certain basic necessities of a people's person's life there are certain things without which you will never be able to survive now which are the basic necessities in our life food clothing and shelter they are the basic necessities of life in a welfare state these needs of people are satisfied okay now if the state is a welfare state then people have enough food to eat they have good clothes to wear and they have comfortable houses to live in and women are honored that is women are given a lot of respect there are no crimes against women okay the common people peasants are not deceived deceived means what cheated common people the farmers the workers they are not cheated if it is a welfare state injustice is not done done to anyone so injustice what do you call injustice in hindi uh, something which is wrong which happens to you na insafi we say okay that is not done to anyone and justice is dispensed quickly even if there is some wrong which is done immediately it is taken care of that is insaf is done very quickly agriculture and industries develop well folk arts flourish 
people can live a happy and contented life. so there is there is lots of food to eat itself means that agriculture is very good people are doing very good farming and industries are also developed okay industries which produce various things folk art also like for example painting drawing dancing songs all these also develop because of all these round round about things okay there is overall development and people live a happy and contented life contented means they are satisfied with their life okay so this is the kind of government we should have this is the kind of state that we should create okay where the basic necessities of everyone is satisfied so this is about a welfare state now how did shivaji maharaj work towards a welfare state see shivaji used to distribute pairs of oxen and other basic necessities among the poor can you see shivaji maharaj used to give oxen why oxen oxen because most of these people were farmers okay so if they were given an oxen they could cultivate their land and they were also given food grains they were also given you can say uh, seeds for sowing okay they were given fertilizers they were given farm equipments so all these things the basic necessities for the life of the people was distributed by shivaji maharaj okay he also took a keen interest in protecting the environment which even today we are doing okay even today we are working towards protection of the environment we ask people to save water we ask people to protect the soil we ask people to reduce pollution all right so even today protection of environment is being done on a large scale now natural environment means what natural environment includes the land in nature so see whatever land is there in nature is part of natural environment now how can you use this land children this land is used in various ways we use it for cultivation we use it for building houses for building roads for building buildings okay so land is a kind of a natural environment is a part of natural environment along with land we also have factors like air okay the air which blows which makes you feel cool so that is also part of natural environment you have a rain which is a part of natural environment you have rivers and streams which is a part of natural environment seas okay the samandar which we say seas then you have forests you have birds and animals and the light which you receive from the sun etc etc you can keep on naming things the fish that you find in the sea okay all the the stones and the rocks that you get everything is part of natural environment all this is a gift which is given to us by nature so what should we do about this gift we should conserve it we should take very good care of this gift that we have got okay it is beneficial for man to make use of his environment only to meet his necessities so you should not exploit the environment okay use it only to the extent where your needs are met don't overuse the things which god has given us or don't overuse the things which nature has given us what will happen when we overuse now you can see how the cost of certain things is going on increasing okay very soon you will learn that whatever you get from nature many of them cannot be made again and again they are called as non renewable some of them can be made again and again so whatever can be made again and again you can use it well the ones which cannot be made again and again for example petrol for example diesel okay this cannot be produced again and again so what should we do we should take very good care of it otherwise it will start getting expensive and expensive and expensive okay you will have to pay more and more and more for it all right so you should make use of the environment only to meet your necessities that is when you're brushing your teeth what should you do take water in a mug instead of leaving the tap open all right when you have a bath try not to use the bath tub or try not to use a shower fill a bucket with water and use that water in order to have a bath this is just about water that i'm saying even electricity sometimes when we are not sitting in the room we leave the fans we leave the lights on and we roam around the whole world that should not be done so only to meet your necessities you should make use of the environment okay now remember that we have we observe the 5th of june every year as the world environment day 
why do we do it why is it necessary to observe one particular day as world environment day to create awareness okay to emphasize to teach people about how conserving nature is important and how protecting the environment is important now these are things that we are doing now we are doing today but remember hundreds of years ago shivaji maharaj had done it shivaji maharaj saw to it that the forests in his kingdom would not be destroyed by the people he used to be take very strict action if people try to destroy the forests in his kingdom okay and also there was a royal edict for the protection of the environment he had written a kind of an order which stated how environment should be protected so see what was written in the royal edict so ramchandra pand amatya wrote the adnya patra that means you have to observe these rules it was a kind of a rule which reflects the policies of shivaji maharaj the following passage elucidates his attitude towards environment so whatever what was his attitude towards environment what did shivaji maharaj think about environment all that is written in this royal edict okay so we will see this in detail very soon so from the royal edict we can see that he had issued many orders to his people what were they like see we'll see a few of them for the navy it is necessary to build boats and ships of various sizes and their beams masts oars etc for which wood is required now if you want to have a navy naturally you want to have ships you will have to have ships for there you will have to have boats there okay and these boats some of them might be small the ships are large and you have various parts in these ships that is there are beams and there are masts so you can see most of them here in these pictures there are oars also all right now all this is made up of what all this is made up of wood okay now to obtain this wood only teak trees should be cut so we require good wood because this has to be work function and survive in water all right if more teak wood is required it should be purchased from foreign territories he said you should not break down and you should not demolish your own forests buy it from the foreign territories all right along with that he also said on no account should mango or jackfruit or other trees be cut why because they give you food they create uh, they produce food for you you eat the fruits all right they don't grow in a year or two it takes a long time for these trees to grow and to bear fruit people look after them like their own children in order to grow them that is why he said that you should never ever cut these trees fruit bearing trees cutting them is to inflict sorrow on the people you will feel very bad you will feel very sad if there is a beautiful mango tree it has got lots of mangoes and you have worked very hard to grow it and someone comes and cuts the tree it should not be done even when a tree is greatly worn out it should be cut only after paying the owner and getting his consent he said even if when you cut a tree you should first seek permission from the owner so these were the things which he had put down in the royal edict and this is how shivaji maharaj protected the environment he was very strict with people who destroyed the environment okay so this we learn a lot about how in today's times also the policies which were made by shivaji maharaj holds true the next point is about water management and then we have some more points also in this lesson so we will not be able to complete this video today children so water management and the other points we will see very soon in the next video which i will put up so i want you to watch the entire video and also i want you all to answer the questions which i have asked you okay so children now you have watched the video so after you watch the video now you will have to complete a few simple tasks now you might have watched the video on your computers or your laptops or your mobile phones now after you watch the video what will you do you will please go to the description box which is given below the video so what is the description box see the description box looks like this all right and after you go to the description box you will see that there are a few questions there now what are these questions about these questions are about the lesson that we just learned or the video that you just watched so what will you do you will think back properly about the lesson and you will try and 
answer these questions and note down the answers in your notebook if you want okay after that we have another task waiting you will also click on the link which you will find in the description box to fill up the google form so now what is the google form children it is nothing but a simple form there are a few simple questions there about the video which you just saw and also about yourself so these are the tasks now that you will have to complete after you watch each video so children wasn't that a very interesting lesson i'm sure you learned a lot of new things in this lesson if you have liked this video please hit the like button and also subscribe to my video so that you will get to see all the videos which i keep posting regularly